In the final part of our series, we're going to look at Super Pascal. Super Pascal is a quite nice compiler suite. It actually includes its own disk operating system in DOS. So using it takes a little bit of upfront work and setup using the included sysgen tool. Do read the manual, which explains this in more detail, um, but it does recommend that you create several different floppies and you separate your tools out into an editor, a compiler, and a utility disk. In the first part of our demonstration, I have loaded the editor. So if we run map drive, which allows us to see the files on the DOS formatted floppy, uh, you'll see here that uh, you, there's only a few files, one of them being the editor. And the editor is the, uh, the file here. There's no compiler, there's no linker. So this is only a floppy, which is intended for us to perform our editing. So let's jump into the edit mode by clicking E, and this will load the editor. Uh, once our editor is loaded, we now need to get our source code. Our source code file is called raxis, so we'll go ahead and load that from the disk. Once it's loaded, I can type L and I can list the source code. Now, the built-in editor works somewhat similar to other ones such as the Commodore Basic Editor. Um, and what you can see is that we, we just simply can start to add lines by typing in, uh, you know, 1056. I can say this is another comment. Uh, but another nice thing that can actually save you some time and having to remember what line number you want is typing N will now automatically increment the line numbers for you as you type. So you can begin by putting in some, some commands. And I'll put in some garbage here as a mistaken line, but you can see that it's auto incrementing as we go. And that's really handy and convenient for you as you're going through. It prevents you from having to type the line numbers out. Now, listing the file out, you'll see my garbage uh, entries are there. I can go ahead and clear those out simply by uh, typing those line numbers out uh, by themselves with a blank uh, and, re and removing them. So looking again at our file, I've cleared out the garbage lines. And there they are. Now, it didn't save the file, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but if, if I wanted to, I would simply say P colon R axis, and it would write that file out to the disk. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to now take a snapshot. So we're going to save state on this particular file. So we'll save that into slot three. And we're going to now exit the editor floppy, and we're going to boot into the compile floppy. As this boots, take a quick look at how my file system structure is laid out. You'll notice that we have the files all named the same as described in episode one for multi-disk setups. Now that my compiler floppy has loaded, we're going to revert from our save state from the editor mode. We're going to load this one so you see it looks like we're just in our editor, but keeping in mind that while we're back in our edit mode, the compile floppy is actually the one that's mounted. So we're going to save the file now onto the compile disk. So we're confirming it, we're saving it to zero. We're going to quit back out. And now let's run the map drive command again on drive zero. And you'll notice that this time, even though we reverted from the editor save state, you'll notice that the Pascal compiler floppy, CPLR, and the assembler commands now exist. So now we're ready to compile this particular source code. You'll also notice that the raxis file is located there as well. Um, the retro axi file is a previous build of this binary, but we're gonna just overwrite that so it doesn't really matter. So let's go into the compile menu. It's going to ask us for the file title. In this case, it's raxis. The drive map is zero. And it's gonna begin compiling the code. So we'll fast forward here and show you the results. Now that our build is complete, it's asking us if we wish to look at a statistical summary of the build. I'm gonna say yes, hit enter. And you'll see just some details about the compilation process, how many procedures it found, how many variables were found, and so on and so forth. 
kind of a nice little feature that Super Pascal provides that the other ones do not. Uh, final step here, it says linking and saving to Retro Axie. Note that this file is named based on the program name that you provided in your source code. So here we can now take a look at map drive and we know that the retro axi file is there. We saw it before, but it has been overwritten by this particular build, but we can now run the program. So let's run the program. Hit enter, load it from drive zero. And here is our program. Retro Axis on Super Pascal. What is your name? Subscribe to Retro Axis, Chris. So that's it for uh, Super Pascal. I hope that you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.